All my content is found on the public domain. I operate using the Fair Use Act guidelines and the Fair Dealings guidelines. I use my own opinions, thoughts, commentary and speculation, which may or may not be true or correct. This is for entertainment purposes, comedy and fun. Like, comment and res with res respect and subscribe. Hello, this is Talking Tech Mum. I'm happy to make another video because there's lots of content again out there to discuss. I would love to just quickly recap on the World Child Awards. I speculated about what I thought Harry was doing at the microphone with the, the muff up there, the, the tears or the laughing and the snorting. I have reviewed the video quite a few times. It's my opinion that he looked up at the teleprompter, he got distracted, don't know what was on there, he decided to look away, uh, showed some body language of discomfort and awkwardness, uh, then he kind of burst out, he must have been pissing himself laughing. Uh, I really believe that because he threw his head far forward and under so that no one could see his face and when he sort of snorted and pulled himself together um, then we, we got back into character of um, <laughs> I'm laughing myself <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I was reading something so ridiculous um, I would I would laugh as well and uh, I wouldn't want people to see me out of character so I would try to hide my face and um, and so he, he composes his tears again and like yeah here we go uh, big performance Harry I didn't actually see him cry I just saw him put on a crybaby face in uh, my opinion and I'm only observing what I saw lots of people will disagree with me you know and that's okay and you know what I'm okay if I'm wrong too if people think I'm wrong that's okay I'm happy to say sorry when I'm proven wrong so then um, we go so that leads me into the next lot of crocodile tears here we go our favorite topic uh, Meghan Markle so let's let's pop on back there to the trip to Africa so now we find out or recently at the end of the trip we found out that there was going to be a documentary well, what a surprise. They've used South Africa to monetize themselves. I'm, I'm sickened by it. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But first of all, let's touch on the hot, hot, hot gossip, which is whilst they were doing the documentary down there, it explains all the happiness and the dancing and the looking into the camera and being suitably um, costumed and styled uh, to suit the location. So, yeah, very interesting. Everything was themed correctly. So that's why that's why it was a fairly good tour, really. Um, but really, this interview, this um, catch of an interview that they've put on, uh, I've got ITV News there has put on Twitter, and that, uh, look at her face. She's putting on her, I'm so sorry about my bird. Every time I speak, <laughs> she starts squawking her head off. So back to Megan. Yeah. I mean, what kind of a what kind of a character is this woman? Nobody nobody asked me if I'm okay. Well, you know what, girl, um, I'm I'm just staggered that you can put on such a crybaby face and 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 stand. She stood there particularly because she had a very tall reporter, and it made her humble, looking up at him, made her look small and insignificant. And and we all feel sorry for Meghan Markle. Uh, no. No, we don't. No, we don't. Has anybody asked her if she's okay? You know what really makes me mad is that, one, she's ghosted anybody who actually ever cared about her. Her father would love to know if she's okay, except she won't answer any of his uh, correspondence. She's got brothers and sisters out there. In my mind, it's screwy potentially, allegedly. Um, nonetheless, they're her family. Hey, my family's very imperfect, so, you know, my family's screwed up. But, yeah, so, um, but she's saying, they go, well, nobody cares about me. What about me? Nobody, nobody wants to know if I'm okay. Well, you know what? I don't actually care whether she's okay. And, and I do apologise, because if you aren't okay, and I mean this seriously, there is Lifeline. There are internet um, reach-out services. There's chat lines. There's phone calls. Please get help before you hit rock bottom. Um, let's go back. So she's she's now she's not okay. It's been really hard um, being Megan because like um, like I were married into like the wealthiest family on the planet, and um, it's really hard not knowing where to shop next. And we've had a baby, so you know she strategically planned to go into the royal family. 
And now she's saying, oh, it's really hard, it's really difficult. Yeah, that's right, because you'll have lovers and haters. That's how it is. And I'm disgusted that they've uh, put this media out in the, on the same day that um, Kate and William did their first open interview with CNN. And I admire, you know, how they present themselves. Everything that Kate spoke about was not me, me, I, you know, all her achievements. It was about them, what they had achieved, what they did, and how their support has helped, you know, um, England and Pakistan and the joint efforts of working together. And there was no mention of I or we, one, not one word. So comparing to every time Megan speaks, it's I, 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 me, me, me. So it's a huge comparison. So that that that's got me, and uh, and again, it's just all strategic, isn't it? Poor old poor old poor old Megs Megsit, she just can't get a win, you know. Um, anybody who, who cared about it got ghosted. So there's no one left, Megan, to ask you, are you okay, right? Because you've ghosted everybody, you you've lied about everybody, and then she has the audacity to lie and go, oh, it's really hard being a newlywed. Well, on um, Twitter. Now, I'm so sorry about the lady. I can't read your handle right there on the screen. But she um, put three photos up on on Twitter. And it's Megan in her first marriage or, or at her first wedding, at her second wedding, now at her third wedding. Now, in my mind, this is her third crack at being a newlywed. How hard can it be? She's been holidaying in on private jets going to tennis matches, having little parties and big parties, buying furniture, renovating, doing all the fun things we'd all like to be doing with an endless amount of money. That must be very difficult. I bet she hasn't washed a dish, cleaned a toilet, scrubbed a floor, or um, picked up dog crap from, from the yard. Uh, none of that. So, you know, what's so hard? You know, I wake up, I've got a dog who's probably crapped somewhere, I've got screaming birds, I've got a mouse I can't catch, you know, you get up and there's chaos before you even get to the bathroom. <laughs> and I know you all know how that is, so I know I'm not alone. And, uh, you know, she, she thinks that that's hard. Come on. I feel like getting one of her stilettos and smashing it in the wall. Um, you know, and someone said to me, oh, she can't ever do anything wrong. Well, no, she can't. She only does things for herself. She's only out there appealing for, for pity. And I don't feel sorry for someone who doesn't help themselves. She doesn't help anyone else, and she certainly doesn't help herself. So that lie gets me between the eyes. The crying. The crying is lying. Uh, I found a video online where she's at the Soho House. What a surprise. She's doing an ad. She's doing an ad, ad junket for Soho House. And someone in the background yells at her and goes, oh, can you cry or something like that. You can, you can go to Link and... Um, have a listen and just like you know just like the dimwit she is she goes oh, oh yeah I can cry on cue Megan left eye Tia go and she reckons she can do it in three seconds what a twit all that's all over the internet so her tears are just crocodile tears every time she doesn't have a personality she's just a narcissistic machine she watch out Harry wouldn't sleep in the same room as her. She's dangerous. She's dangerous. And that's what I'm saying about her. And I'm right. Um, it's my gut feeling. I'm not often wrong. And you know what? You can attack me about it. But you know what? She, she's a worry. Okie dokie. So the other thing I wanted to touch on is the letter that Meghan Markle's half-brother wrote to Harry uh, prior to the wedding. It's all over the internet. You can find it yourself. But uh, it was... You know, quite prophetic in a way how he had written about her um, you know don't marry her she'll bring the royal family down and so on and so forth read it for yourself um yeah very intriguing and interested uh, in in how that looks now as you know how offensive it was in the beginning I mean don't get me wrong in the beginning I, I was intrigued by her she was an actress with a great lifestyle who suddenly wanted to go and live in England um, with lots of rules and I was like yeah this is really weird interesting but weird she seemed attractive at the time, and I thought, wow, this is interesting, um, and sudden, and so forth, and she's quite old, so, yeah, I was, I was interested, and I thought, you know, in many ways, the wedding was nice, and she was lovely, and I thought, oh, this, I actually thought, it, I was wrong, I thought, you know what, I was wrong about her, she actually has got a lot to offer, but, you know, subsequent to that, I 
I see. I, I just see not a not a quality person there at all, and someone who's um, will eat someone alive to get uh, to survive. You know, if you're on a plane crash with her in the snow, in the in the snow, in the Alps, like in those movies, she'd eat someone to stay alive. I reckon. Oh, that's a horrible thing to say, <laughs> but it's been the movies, so you know, uh, take it um, as a comical uh, perspective. <laughs> um, yeah, getting back, so. So just touching back on um, South Africa, you know, and then Harry, uh, the other thing I want to comment on how Harry had, had spoken about, oh, every time I see a lens or hear a lens, you know, click, it, it reminds me of my mother and it's a trigger. And I, you know, I, I, I don't really feel sorry for him. I'm sorry. Um, you know, we've all had tragedy. You know, I lost my mum when I was young also. So uh, I just didn't have any help. I didn't have any assistance. Uh, I didn't have any money. <laughs> I didn't have anything. Uh, I was just lucky to survive um, in the household I was in and, um, and, and got my, my shit together and uh, made a life for myself. Um, but uh, always hard, you know, and there are always triggers. But the thing is, if there's triggers in your life, what you do is you avoid them and you, you, you do things um, to uh, make your life so that you're not thinking, uh, triggering yourself all the time in any sort of uh, stressful you know, circumstance. So in, in my mind, if I was him, I wouldn't want cameras around if that was triggering him so much, and I would certainly live a lifestyle away from that. I would reject the royal family and the paparazzi and go, you know what, that, that's what killed my mum, so you know, I don't want any part of it. Hand in your keys, hand in your money, hand in your credit cards, um, and go to, go to Canada and, and work in a store, and no one will ever photograph you ever again. They won't care. So, you know, you want the lifestyle, it's a package deal, you know. You can't... You know, you can't have a, the lifestyle without accepting the whole package because the taxpayer is paying for it and you are accountable to the taxpayer, so the royal reporters have to report on it. It's as simple as that. Stop taking the money, they'll stop photographing you because you're no longer accountable. Uh, moving on, uh, I guess I feel a little disappointed that they use that South Africa as their, their platform for pity, the pity platform. I think that's really unfair to be doing a documentary and it's all about them and their feelings and to feel sorry for them. And that's only the clips they've shown us. So they're creating an illusion already, a perception. So don't blame me for what I'm feeling because they're not showing the the tragedies in Africa and, you know, Heron and Megan, you know, sacrificing themselves to help others. They're filming them in this beautifully safe um, environment of... Um, filming and peace and calm in in South Africa, and they're talking openly about, you know, their their hurts and their, you know, what's upset them and so forth. But you know, they were there to help the people. <sighs> you know, even that photo where she went to that, you know, that tragic post office um, where that 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 poor lady, a young girl, uh, lost her life so 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 hideously. You know. I'd like to see the footage on that. Does she does she create a crocodile tear or is she just laying a ribbon, you know? Um, you know, all that sort of thing. I, I just, I don't know, put, put yourself in their situation. You know, go through those slum areas. See what it's like to have no sanitation, no toilet paper, um, no locks on your doors. Uh, you know, so, so such horrible things happen there and, and they're featuring themselves. And I don't like that. I just... I couldn't make it about me when I know I was supposed to be making it about them. Anyway, finishing on a very positive note, the Pakistan tour with uh, future Queen uh, Kate and future King William. Honestly, they're amazing. I, I love them. They didn't do a wrong move. I'm really pleased. There's one thing that's rubbed off of Meghan Harry is uh, doing some interview. I uh, did an interview, and that's great. They came across brilliant.